favorite cove. I really like this rock. Best chance for a lean cop. I made that. Now you don't. It just got washed off. Oh, look at that. Tangle two. Ah. To, uh, to the ground is just a life lesson. I mean, <laughs> there was a large Uh, middle of March, I'm down here in the uh, my, my new favorite cove of uh, Montana de Oro. You can see the, the ocean is is still jumbly. It looks like it's calming down, but there is definitely uh, a small swell. So I will be able to get over to my spot over there, do a little cast. Let's get that done before it gets too light, too much more light. You know, I really like this rod, but I'm kind of missing my telescopic rods. You know, you'd get there, you just had to pull them out, the hook was all ready to go. But I think I need, if I get one, it's got to be a little shorter. Maybe they'll be more rugged, they'll last longer. You can see the edge right along that reef there. That's where I'm going to fish. It's from 5 to 10 foot around there. That's why we're here. The visibility is not too bad for the last few weeks. It's just been brown, nasty water you couldn't really see through. But it looks like we're getting a little visibility, and that's good for fishing. This place is just perfect for swim baits. I really got a tech. It's a, probably the best chance for a lean cod. I'm working bait and I'm casting it out, but you can see that's a great little peninsula to work a swim bait. So next time I go out there, I'm going to do that for sure. couple hours probably longer than that and I think I got like one bite that was about it so decided to head to the other side of the reef over here and check that out for a while the little man's pretty spry when he thinks a rogue wave gonna come over and splashes an extra cheapy video camera But alas, I worked that side of the reef and the, oh, I'd been here four or five hours by now, getting kind of hungry, looking for some lunch. Yeah, so we finished lunch, got a little coffee in us, a little food and a little ibuprofen <laughs> and decided to uh, work this little inlet. If you look across the inlet there, that, that reef is where I was fishing this all morning. Yeah, so the fishing hasn't been that great, but I remembered I brought a crab snare along, one of the easy ones to the easy ones to make. So I'm going to give that a try. I made that crab snare myself. I, I made some other ones a standard kind out of a box, and then I had some leftover material and thought, hey, just fold it over and wire two sides or three the two sides shut. I have a little hole left open where you can stuff the stuff uh, bait in and. You can wire that shut. It takes, a, it takes some needle nose pliers to do that, but it's very easy to make. It only costs a few cents. I made it real fast. You can make a bunch of them. Just make the loops out of 30 pound tests and loop knots. Now, on the other side of that inlet, that's where I was fishing before. I uh, took lunch on this side and decided, you know, work that hole uh, to see if there's any fish down there. Check my crab stair. There's my little hand line. I made that hand line to, uh, for a video on catching cabazon on the central coast. That's how they used to do it in the old days. Just a bolt tied to the end and a hook on top of that. 
real cheap Carolina rig. So look how clear that water's gotten. It's really nice. The handline video is still on my list of videos to make. I got tons of them. No, the time is what you need. Okay, I'm really tired. I've been there about six hours, but you can just see conditions completely changed. It's visibility, water's hardly moving, so. Do one more trip out there. Exactly. Got to go over and get that crab snare. And check it out. Five inch rock crab. Frankly, I'm kind of stunned. Oh yeah, he's five. Five inches. Nice. Sweet and titties. Yeah, got ourselves a nice crab. Yeah, I'm not sure how much I like rock crab. I had one other claw before. I'm just going to take a claw on this one to try it. I, it's got to be delicious. And that was a very clean looking crab, so I can't wait to try it. But that's a huge claw. Took that thing up. I think I overcooked the last one I had. So until I learn how to cook crab, I'm just going to take one claw. Woo! <laughs> Okay, catching that crab reinvigorated my spirit. So yeah, heading back across there, gonna work that edge again. We didn't catch anything along that edge. I was kind of thinking it'd be easy to get a few rock crabs over there, but it didn't happen. Now I'm heading back directly across from where I caught the uh, rock crab a, a little while ago, and I'm going to try to fish out there. If nothing happens there, I'm heading home because I am beat. The only bite I think I got that morning was right there, so I set this thing right right there, right where I thought it would be. A little electrical tape over your buttons or your uh, card insert on those uh, cheapo uh, cameras, save you from splashes. And then I worked the pole all around that area there and uh, never really got a bite, so I decided, okay, let me check the uh, crab snare and if I don't have anything, maybe I'm, I'm just going to call this a day. Now, you ever had one of those days when everything goes wrong? Out of nowhere, I've got this tremendous snag. And it's not, I'm not like I'm on a reef, I'm on a little peninsula here, so I'm trying to get an angle on it, how I can release it. And I don't want to break the pole, so I want to get a pull straight, uh, pull the pole straight, but that's kind of hard, I don't have enough room, so I'm trying to work it. Maybe I can get below the snag and pull it out that way. I hope this is clear enough, but if you look closely when I'm pulling up, my handle falls off, and I lose it. I have no clue where I lost it, so I'm just looking around anywhere. Meanwhile, I have no way to reel in my line, get it nice and tight so I can break off my snag. It took me a while to learn the lesson of gear ratio, so I actually tried to, you know, spoon it up my reel by hand, but uh, that didn't work. And while I was doing that, watch this. See the hand line on the rock? Now you don't. It just got washed off.
So now I'm tired and everything is going wrong and I'm, I'm befuddled, so I'm, I'm just not quite thinking right. And when that happens, what happens? Oh, look at that. So as of now, I have a snap pole, uh, a broken reel, uh, a snag, and a lost crab snare. Luckily, some of the line from the crab snare caught on a rock, so I was able to get that. The unlucky part is I have like 60 feet of line on the crab snare that all going to have to be reeled in after I pull the crab snare handle out, which is unwinding as I do it. So I got to unwind it all out and then I got to wind it all back in. It's, it's yeah, amazing. Oh man. Oh wait, I'm not done. As I pull that line out, it's dropping on my uh, string from my pole and that's getting tangled too. I finally get it all wound up and I put it inside a nice ziplock there to kind of contain everything and put it in my pocket so I won't lose it and it won't unwind again. And now I've got to deal with how to get the snag out. So I figure I'm going to wrap the line around the two pieces of the pole and then kind of get real close to it and pull real hard. So I'm just about all set to reach down there and try to break the line and I, and I give the line a, a, a easy tug and it, and it just comes right out. <laughs> Woo! That is a monkey facer and a half, man. That is a big old boy. And look at the size of this thing. My knee to uh, to the ground is just under two feet, and that thing is longer than that. So it's over two feet. I didn't measure it. I always forget. That's a big old Look at eel. this monster eel, man. The sucker swallowed the whole thing. So we're going to have to take them. Oh my god, it's a diddy Busted my pole. But I've got parts and pieces for this pole. Well, catching that eel was kind of a life lesson. I mean, no. what I thought was misfortune was actually fortune. The snag. I, I was trying to break. I couldn't break because I lost my handle, but it wasn't a snag. It was that eel. And I still wouldn't have caught it had not all the other things happened because it, I needed time for the eel to bleed out underwater and then I could pull them out from the snag. They're hard to flee. They're definitely hard to flee. And I'm kind of tired, but they are tasty. I can't wait to cook it up. Look at that baby. Montana de Oro is just beautiful. Any, any place you film is just, just pretty. Oops, I forgot my hat. Well, last time I was out the South Jetty, I set my flay knife down beside me. It was nice and sharp. And tink, 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 tink. Fell all the way deep down into the rocks. I didn't get it back. Yeah, I bought uh, this old a bony knife I had. It could be sharp, but I didn't sharpen it, so it's going to make flaying this even rougher. Still, I can't wait to get to the meat because these are very tasty fish. Yeah, even with my poor fillet job, I, I get about a pound of meat off this fish. It's, it's a lot of a lot of meat on there. The small ones have nothing. When they get to a certain size up front, they they, they, get, they carry a lot more meat. And that eel was really delicious. I took it home. It had a seafood combo with uh, that claw, which was really good. I boiled it for 20 minutes in a little salt and spices. It was really good. So from now on, I'm taking that whole crab. And then uh, from the last trip, I had a couple lippets I brought home and froze. 
and I cleaned them up really well and tried them, and, and they weren't that bad either. So I, uh, I got the plate coming up here in Australia. I don't film food the greatest, but at least you can see what, uh, what I was eating. That eel was so clean and fresh. So yeah, that was my uh, delicious looking plate of seafood. It was rather large and that crab was really good. I, that crab was really tasty. That was crab. So from now on, I'll be taking the whole crab and uh, just doing some close-ups and stuff. I'm trying to learn how to film the, the food. My camera's pretty good at close-ups, not so good from far away, but that was some really good eel. It was so clean. Hmm, that's my tartar sauce. It's tasty too. <laughs> there was a large crab claw, so I cooked it for 20 minutes. It came out great. First time I think I really had great crab. The little darker piece there is, is the limpet, uh, which was pretty good, except they are very chewy. But if, if you were really hungry and you had to eat, I would say go for those limpets. They'll fill you up. But it was very chewy. I actually had to, I couldn't get the ring to break down and had to spit it out. But it was really good. They were actually, you know, very clammy. Here's a, a little uh, surfing for you. Thanks for watching.